So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wheel and Anchor webinar about our program, South African Secrets, uh, South African Secrets. Uh, and very excited to have everyone here today to talk about this program, which is um, one of my favorite places. So I'm very excited to jump right into this. Um, for those of you who are uh, new to us, who haven't joined us on one of our webinars this morning, um, just a couple of logistics topics. First of all, if you want to communicate with us at all, then all you need to do is scroll down down to the green with the mouse, click on the mark chat, and that's where you can um, ask any questions, um, make any comments, any feedback. Um, I actually have a question for everyone that I want you to answer. I want you to be prepared for a special question I've prepared for the webinar today. I'm going to test your knowledge. Um, and, um, and yeah, as I say, that's where we will, um, uh, that's where we'll, you can communicate with us. So let us uh, continue on now. For the, Again, for those of you who have not joined in one of our uh, uh, webinars before, if you're new to perhaps to Wheel and Anchor, what we're all about is bringing travelers together. This is my vision when we started Wheel and Anchor. Um, the idea is, is that the majority of our members are well-traveled people. You've, uh, you've already been to all kinds of places around the world and you've already discerned um, what comprises a great tour. And, and part of that is frankly, having other people who have a like-minded view of um, of the learning, the experience, the fun, um, and the way that, you know, we are, are sort of responsible and, and interested travelers. And so Wheel and Anchor is about bringing all of you together um, to enjoy some, um, some great experiences. My personal goal for each of you as members is uh, that you be well-traveled and well-connected. So when we say, when I think about well-traveled, um, it doesn't mean just going on holiday to the Caribbean, sitting on beach, that, that doesn't really count in my books, but it's about go, having got, had the opportunity to go out in the world, experience other cultures, talk to local people, and really get a glimpse about what life is like you know, for the other 7 billion people on the planet, so to speak. Um, and being well-connected is, um, as I said at the outset, it's when, you, when we bring our travelers, our members together, you meet other people, you hear about other stories. We've done this through many of our events. Um, I always make an effort to make sure people have a chance to talk about where they've been because other people get inspired by your travel stories. Let's face it, it's one of the greatest things to talk about. When you're connected with other travelers, um, it just opens up a whole, whole other um, a whole other word, world. So that's what we're about today. I'd like to introduce our team. I'm very excited that on our webinar today that everybody is actually here. So um, both Joel, maybe Joel and Cassandra want to stick their heads in the camera so that they can see that they're actually here because it's an auspicious occasion that we're all in one room. Um, so there's, uh, there's Joel and there's Cassandra. Some of you will have spoken to Cassandra. She is our member services specialist who you will speak to on the phone. If uh, you are calling in and you have questions, um, Joel, my co-founder, and provides our technical support. So if something goes wrong, we blame him. Um, and our special guest today, I'm particularly excited to introduce Jackie. You will see her on the screen. Give us a big wave, Jackie. Jackie is joining our webinar this morning all the way from South Africa. And some of you may even recognize Jackie if you traveled with me to Africa before, a number of years ago, before Wheel and Anchor was even formed. Um, we were blessed to have um, Jackie as our local guide, and she is one of the most fun, not knowledgeable, explaining people um, in, the, in her country. So, um, so, so anyway, Jackie, I hope I'm not boosting your ego there too much, but very excited to have Jackie. And she'll give us a little flavor of what South Africa is like um, from her perspective. Our plan today, um, today it's, um, it's all about um, all of us, um, myself included, who are curious about the culture of South Africa, and not just the culture, but the incredible landscapes, the flora, the fauna, the food. I'm going to tell you about the food because what's one, one of my favorite things about South Africa. Um, I'm going to be your guide today together with Jackie. So very lucky that I that we have Jackie here and we are going to be taking a look at South Africa um, and our destination in November of 2020 actually. See it says October there. So that's the, 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 the first um, mark for Joel. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's take a look. I think we all know where South Africa is of course at the very bottom of Africa. You can see it on the map behind me down here. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, a lot of people don't read uh, uh, South Africa and how it is quite different than many of the uh, than pretty much any of the other countries in sub sub-Saharan Africa. 
Uh, and uh, so we'll go into it in a little bit more detail. Um, but specifically in South Africa, we're going to be focused on the South Coast. So we're going to start our program in Cape Town, again, a city that I'm sure you'll be um, uh, sure, sure you'll be familiar with, at least you've seen a picture of, of Table Mountain and so on. And we're going to make our way from there through the winelands, um, through the garden route, uh, and um, and take our, our um, safari component of our program in uh, Kwandwe Private Reserve. And I'll tell, between myself and Jackie, we'll tell you a little bit more about that and why we've selected this particular itinerary, because we've taken a long time to, to research this. I've been in many parts of South Africa, um, uh, all across the country, and I think that uh, the program that we've created um, for, for Wheel and Anchor is really quite unique. Um, and I like so let's go through it day by day and then uh, I'll let her in on, uh, uh, on uh, any comments that she has on our daily program so we're gonna leave on uh, our, uh, the 18th or the 19th of November um, the reason we say 18th or 19th it really depends on the routing that you choose to fly to South Africa I highly recommend a routing via Europe it just uh, breaks up two long flights. Let's face it, it takes a long time to get there. Your average flight time, um, depending on where you're coming in from in Canada, is going to be between 20 and 30 hours. So it's 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 a long way, um, but it's worth every single mile. Um, we will arrive in Cape Town on the 20th of November. Um, as usual, as with all of our programs, we are setting this up so that um, you can take the flight routing of your choice. So you don't have to fly uh, through Toronto if you don't want to. If you're joining us, I see we have some um, people joining us from the West Coast. You can directly and from there down to Cape Town, uh, and so no matter when you arrive, we will pick you up at the airport and um, bring you to the hotel, um, the wonderful Cape Milner Hotel, where we're going to be sp spending the first four nights of our trip. Um, and um, look at the beautiful view of Cape Town. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite cities. It's truly, truly um, a fantastic city. So we'll arrive in, you'll have the rest of the day at leisure because you're going to be quite tired, but because of the location, um, it, right adjacent to downtown. Jackie, you can walk from the hotel pretty much uh, down to um, through the downtown part. It's relatively safe during the day. How would you describe that? Yeah, so the the hotel is, is well located. It's very close to Kloof Street, which is one of the restaurant strips. Um, so it's very close to restaurants. And then um, it's also close to the top of Long Street. Um, and just behind Long Street is sort of the center of town. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good walk. Um, yeah, not, not one that we would recommend doing at night, but then that's the city. But during the daytime, fine, no problem. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's why we selected the hotel. And uh, as I say, I've walked all around Cape Town myself. Uh, and uh, uh, a big focus for a lot of people is, is visiting the uh, the v &A waterfront, which is a whole complex of retail shops and restaurants, um, very modern design. It's a great, great spot to be in. Um, you can wander around that pretty much any time, day or night. Uh, it's a very, very popular spot amongst locals as well as amongst, as well as amongst um, visitors, of course. So after that, as I say, we're going to have a, a, a few great days in Cape Town. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do when we on the first day is uh, we're, we're going to take a trip up, up Table Mountain. So we'll, we'll have a walking tour, a sightseeing tour around um, the center part of the city. You get a great um, view of it here in this shot. Um, but then, you know, you can't go to Cape Town but going up Table Mountain. Um, itself. If you're really adventurous, you can walk up. I've walked up Table Mountain a couple of times. Um, it is a bit of a tough climb, but I think for the most part, we'll just take the cable car. <laughs> and uh, the cable car will bring us up to this amazing, and, and Table Mountain is a table. It's really flat on top, and it has incredible views in this direction over the central part of Cape Town, as you see, um, and um, Lion's Head. That's the mountain down there you see to the left, is it not? Uh, and uh, and you get amazing views over the sea, but also uh, to the north, uh, you can look up, and and uh, so it's it's quite a spectacular place. Wonderful walking trails. We'll some have some time up there, but then we're going to come down in the afternoon and arrange something particularly special. Could you tell us a little bit about Christo Brand uh, and what he's all about? Because uh, I think this is something I haven't actually done before. I've heard of him. Tell us, Jackie, what is Christo Brand all about? Okay, so Christo Brand is is a little bit of a of a celebrity, um, but he's 
is a reluctant celebrity. So he, Christo was Nelson Mandela's jailer for the better part of 10 or 15 years. So he joined Robin, he joined Robin Island as a, a prison guard when he was very young and had no clue what, um, what Nelson Mandela was about, had no clue what apartheid was, um, had no clue why these, these gentle old men were in jail. And uh, he forged a very firm uh, bond with Nelson Mandela and with his other co-convicted. Um, and his, he, he pretty much uh, Nelson Mandela shaped the rest of Christo's life. Um, he was also seconded to uh, Polesmore Prison when Nelson Mandela came off Robben Island. Um, and he was in Polesmore Prison. And this was during the 80s when the negotiations first started with the South African government. Um, what, what I particularly know is that he's a very simple, very uncomplicated man. He's not well educated. He's not very ambitious. Um, and and he's, just, he's just warm and, and friendly. And ha- talking to him about his experiences with Nelson Mandela, give you a I can still hear you. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Keep going, Jackie. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's. I'm it's not here. Okay. It, sometimes we have little internet glitches, but should be okay. So it's a okay, great cool. story. I love it. Please go. Keep going. Well, um, what I what I particularly like about his story. So we normally will interact with Christo. We'll invite him for um, for some drinks, and he, he will a story. And the what I particularly like about his story is if you've read. Nelson Mandela's uh, Long Walk to Freedom, and you know the story of apartheid, and you know the story of Nelson Mandela. Um, you'll know that it's a very violent story, and it's a and it's and it's a it's very heavily political. And Christo's experience and the story that he would he will tell us of Nelson Mandela is one of is a story of humanity and of the the lives of these gentle old men, who while they were political activists, they were. Um, they were in prison, and so they had they were completely cut off from everything that was happening in South Africa. So while the country was burning and people were being thrown in jail, the leaders of the resistance were playing ping pong um, with each other and tending their vegetable gardens, and 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 that's the side of the story that you hear from Christo. Yeah. Um, in addition to, to some of the other stuff. Um, and, it's, and it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful insight into into a very human side of Nelson Mandela. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, it it will undoubtedly, and those are the kind of experiences that you know we try to uh, accomplish on our trips because I think that's going to be very spe- special. Very much looking forward to that. So that'll be our first day, Cape Town itself. Um, the next day, of course. Um, yet another highlight of our trip. Every day is a highlight. Um, we're going to head down to the Cape of Good Hope, which mo- a lot of people think the Cape of Good Hope is the southernmost point of, a- uh, of Africa, which it actually isn't. It's the most southwestern point um, in South Africa. Uh, and it is certainly the most famous one. So we're going to drive down there. It's a spectacular peninsula um, with uh, um, roads. You get a sense of it from the, the photo here. There's no forest. So you can see these long distances over the plains and then you have these majestic cliffs um, where the Cape of Good Hope, uh, the whole a peninsula juts out uh, into the Indian Ocean, um, or in, it's actually the Atlantic Ocean at this point, um, because the, I think the, the, the break between the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean is at Cape um, Agulhas, is it not? Um, it's further, further south even, right? So... Um, so Sorry, technical glitch. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, <clears throat> as I was saying, we're going to have a, a, a full day trip down to the Cape of Good Hope on the way back. Depending on how busy it is, we're going to stop at the Penguin Colony at Boulders, which is quite a uh, popular spot. Uh, and uh, it, uh, But we have another place to visit some penguins 
um, on the following day. So we we'll, we'll see we'll see how it is. Uh, and uh, but it's it's really quite amazing to see these unique brand of penguins. They're different than the ones um, in in Antarctica, but they're a lot of fun uh, to watch and to sort of um, check out as we as we move along from from after day then uh, our next day um, we'll be off to see the Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens now I actually haven't been there uh, but perhaps uh, Jackie what's special about Kirsten Bosch I've heard about it and I've never managed to go there myself well um, it's our flagship botanical garden um, it was the brainchild of Cecil John Rhodes uh, anybody who knows a little bit about the Rhodes scholarship and the history of South Africa will know about Cecil John Rhodes um, very accomplished man uh, you'll have to do the tour to find out more. But um, he he had a vision to create this beautiful um, botanical garden. And what it does is it showcases um, indigenous plants from all over Southern Africa. So we all know that the Cape is the Cape Floral Kingdom is the um, the most diverse of the of all global floral kingdoms. We have over ten thousand different species. plants uh, that are native to the area um, and and Kirstenbosch showcases the Cape Floral Kingdom beautifully but more than that it, it, it showcases many of the plants from that are that are uh, native to other parts of, of southern Africa um, it's in the shadow of Table Mountain it's on the, the eastern side of Table Mountain so that's Table Mountain that you can see behind in that in that picture um, and it's a uh, 90 acres of um, manicured gardens okay. um, so it's 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 really quite spectacular uh, it's a nice place to get the heart rate up because it's it's on the side of the mountain, um, but uh, you know there's there's uh, um, ancient trees, the cycads. There's a whole section devoted to Jurassic Park. Um, there are medicinal plants. Um, a lot of the native Africans would use medicinal plants, and many still do. Um, and then there's uh, a, a huge section de devoted to very large trees, in addition to the the annual in the west so it, it it really is worth a visit and uh, um uh, for anybody who's interested in plants nature beautiful place fantastic fantastic so that's going to be um the highlight of that day and of course we'll have lots of free time to explore uh cape town itself um visit the vna waterfront um, and there's um, a number of other things as with all of our programs, we make sure that there is time for you to go off and explore on your own. Um, if there are things that you'd particularly like to do that are not included in our program, um, we have time for that. So after this uh, day, we'll be saying uh, goodbye to uh, Cape Town as we make our way up into the Winelands. Um, and on the way up, we're gonna be going to um, Hermanus, which is a little town uh, up going, um, I guess we're going uh, to the north, basically to Hermanus. And uh, I'm familiar with this area mostly because of the wine. <laughs> as, as many of you will know, I'm really fantastic in um, Hermanus. And what are the chances that we're going to see some whales uh, this time of the year? I know it's really not the season for it, but uh, but I know that people go to Hermanus, Jackie, to to see the whales specifically. Yeah, Golden, it's, it, Hermanus is one of the best places in the world for land-based whale watching. Um, and the whales come really close to shore. Mm. Uh, and they, they come up to breed and carve in the, in the winter months. Um, November and early December is, is a little late in the season, but it's, it's not entirely impossible for us to see whales. Um, there have been years where they've lingered um, into December before heading south. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll keep our fingers crossed. We might we might well see some. Uh, and if we didn't go to see uh, the penguins in at Boulders uh, in on the way to um, to um, Cape Point, then we'll see here, which uh, as, as I think you were telling me, Jackie, it's a lot quieter spot. It's a get get to be it's not as touristy as it is over in uh, in Boulders, yeah. That's correct. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot. It's a larger colony. Um, it's a lot. It's, it's sort of spread out over a larger area, and mm -hmm. uh, and there aren't. It's getting. It's 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 getting a little busier than it used to be in the past, but certainly nowhere near as busy as as um, as in, as boulders. So cool. we can spend some good quality time with the penguins. Perfect. Perfect. So that's exciting. We will end up that day 
um, over in Stellenbosch. And so for the wine lovers in our group, you probably have heard of Stellenbosch before. It is the most, uh, the largest town and, and, and the most famous town in the so-called Cape Winelands area. And South Africa is really known for its wines. And, you know, we, unfortunately here in Canada, we only get a smattering of, of the, the fabulous wines that are available in South Africa. I've always had great experience with, with them. Um, so um, this thing that I host tours that I've seen in my experience, they tend to sort of gloss over. They do a one day trip from Cape Town up to Stellenbosch and back. And it just it doesn't do it justice because the countryside, as you can see here from the photo, is spectacular. Um, you see a lot of these um, white colored houses in and amongst the, the vineyards. Uh, they have a lot of other agricultural products up here. The whole area around Stellenbosch is 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 fantastic. Um, we have a lovely uh, country manor that we're staying in while we're in in this area, uh, and uh, yeah, it's really it's really it's really quite exciting. So we're going to spend three nights up in Stellenbosch, um, and the um, our first uh, full day that we're there, we're going to head up to Frenchhook, which is where Jackie, you are right now, <laughs> actually. That's great. <laughs> Frenchhook Indeed. is my favorite town in the area um, because it's a it's a quaint little town in and of itself. Um, and again, you've got um, all the farmers, you've got uh, other fruit and vegetable farms, and of course, the wines. Jackie, what, what, what's the highlight for you of being in French Oak and what, what, uh, what we can expect to see with our members when we visit? Well, um, apart from the fact that it's, it's really, really pretty, um, French Oak is sort of known as a food and wine destination. There's some really exceptional restaurants in French Oak. Mm. Um, for, for us and for me, I, I, we have a, a number of, of um, close friendships with some winemakers and, and uh, so we'll be introducing you to some of those people um, and, and just giving you the opportunity to, um, to get behind the scenes in yeah. winemaking um, yeah. and uh, just to get, have a, little, a few, a few winemaking experiences um, with, with some, some winemakers. So, um, so yeah. It'll be it'll be a little bit of, of getting your feet and your hands dirty and uh, and enjoying some wine at this. As this is all about the wines in this area, and of course the Stellenbosch, the, the wines from the Greater Winelands area, um, are are really quite highly rated um, and prized around the world. As with a lot of wine producing countries, a lot of the wines don't get exported; um, they're consumed right in South Africa. So we'll get a chance to um, not only taste but even buy some of the wines um, that we can then perhaps enjoy along the way during the rest of the trip. Maybe even maybe even a bottle or two to bring home. Um, the the you know what makes the wine special here is you know these granite mountains that are super super old some of the oldest um, mountains um, that you'll find anywhere in fact you know as as in the notes there it's um, the, the the soils are three times as old as the one in Napa so you can imagine the the quality that it brings to the grapes Pinotage is really the perhaps the most um, popular or the most grown grape or one of the most grown grapes in South Africa and I find that the South African Pinotage has a, a, has a particular it's, you know it's like a it's like a Cab Merlot type of a thing but yet it has its own distinctive flavors to it so I look forward very much to the wines that we'll taste and the food that we'll eat with it and uh, you know Jackie alluded to it I mentioned it um, you can't understate how great the food is in South Africa. It is really, it, it, you know, in terms of if you were to compare it, um, you know, on par with in Canada, um, it's just way better and much less expensive um, than dining here. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a real treat. Uh, and uh, that's why we've, been, we've included some of the lunches and dinners, um, uh, but we've also left many open because I think it's important that you go out um, and you try some of these places you're on. You'll be surprised how um, reasonable it actually is. Uh, so from after we leave um, Stellenbosch, um, after spending a couple of nights there, we are going to head now towards the garden route. Um, so we're going to be heading east uh, along the... Uh, uh, the, the set coast of heading inland. We're going to be heading towards um, Plettenberg Bay um, and the whole uh, Garden Route area. Um, we're staying at a lovely place there, um, Hunter's, um, sorry, Hunter's Valley Lodge, I think it's called again. Jackie, correct me on the name. Yeah. Hunter's Country Lodge. Hunter's Country Hunter's Lodge. Hunter's Country House. Yes, Country House. Right. 
Yeah, very nice. Um, so, and now I must say, this is a part of South Africa I'm less familiar with. I only ever drove through it once many, many years ago. Um, give us a sense of what, what is the garden route all about in this Plettenberg? I mean, why, why is it such a draw for people to visit? What makes it special? Well, you know, I think it's, it's quite different from the Cape. It has um, a, a string of um, coastal mountains that um, sort of run up well, along the coast. Mm. Uh, you can see them, you can see them in that photograph. They're not as, as large as the Cape Town mountains, but they, they affect the, um, they affect the climate. And so the garden route has this very distinctive climate that's quite different from mm. Cape Town and the wine country. Um, and this, uh, so seaside of those mountains is a thick sort of swathe of indigenous forest. And that's what gives the garden route its name. Um, these beautiful, uh, hardwoods like yellow woods and milk woods and stink woods, um, that, that have become synonymous with South African Cape Dutch furniture, for example. Um, a lot of it comes from here. So Plettenberg Bay used to be called Bahia Formosa. The Dutch, the, uh, um, Portuguese called it Bahia Formosa, the beautiful bay. Um, and, uh, and, and the name is, is quite fitting. So it's, this, is, this is really about exploring the forests, um, the beautiful, beautiful coastline, um, and, and the people in the area, um, the activities and the, lots of activities in the area. Exactly. And so one of the activities that we're going to um, while we're in our threats at Hunter's Country House uh, is, uh, is to visit um, Nysna. So the pronunciation is the K is silent. Uh, and I got that right, right? It's called Nysna. Yeah. <laughs> you did. <laughs> there you go. Got to practice my pronunciation of these towns. So Nysna is one of these, uh, these places, again, that's very, very popular to visit. Um, but we're going to do something a little bit different that goes, again, beyond the normal tourist track. And we're going to go and visit a local, um, I guess it's a township, they call it in South Africa. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So we're going to go and visit a township. Um, and I think this is, again, an opportunity to understand, you know, uh, a little bit about um, the dichotomies in South Africa. Um, and yeah, I think uh, most of us will know, um, you know, the history of apartheid um, that was dismantled, um, you know, more than uh, 20 years ago, uh, 30 years ago, I guess it was now. Uh, and um, uh, yet uh, a number, a lot of South Africans still it's a lot of um, can you summarize what, what's that going to be like? What can we expect to, to experience in, in talking to some of the locals in this township? Well, I, you know, I think it's, um, it, it, first of all, it's going to be very different from, from, uh, from the experience, for, from all the other experiences that you're going to have in South Africa. And I think it's important that, that people who visit South Africa and stay in nice hotels and eat in nice restaurants realize that that's, that that's very much in the minority in mm. this country. Um, and to see how um, the majority of the population lives, um, I think is, is one, of those, one of those things that everybody must do. Um, but we need to do that with, we need to do that with care. Um, and so we will get into the community, we'll walk through the community, we'll meet people, we'll go into homes, we'll go into schools. Um, so we, we get, learn a little bit more about the soul of the community rather than just sort of driving through and taking photographs and doing a tourist thing. So, um, a very experience, and I think that's, uh, I think, again, going to be very memorable. Um, I know having done that in other parts of the world, and, you know, we, it's, 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 it's good for us to, to understand how lucky, you know, many of us are, um, and uh, to understand sort of the, the, the plight of, um, of a lot of other people. So, so that will be, again, a memorable part of our trip. Uh, while we're in Nice now, we're, we're also going to take a cruise around. And, um, and uh, then the following day, we're going to head to uh, a, a city, a small, well, I guess it's not really a city, it's a town called Otorn, um, where we'll visit, uh, Jackie's going to laugh at my pronunciation, I have to brush up on my, on my Afrikaans. <laughs> Um, but we're going to visit on this day uh, while we're in this area an, an ostrich farm. Uh, ostrich is always a funny creatures, um, and uh, and and also these tango caves, which I'm quite intrigued about because uh, I'm a bit of a spelunker myself, and um, the these caves underground with the ants and the stalagmites uh, looks like a, a, a very fun spot, Jackie. I, I take it you've uh, been there uh, more than a few times. <laughs> 
I, I have, I have, and I, I have to say, I, I love caves. I'm not a Spelunker. I don't like being in dark places for too long, but, um, but these are massive. And, um, and uh, the, the, the formation of the caves, obviously they're limestone caves. So the formation is, re is really interesting. Um, and it's not, not, it's not a place that you would expect to see something like this. So it's Indeed. a must do. It's a must do and we are going to do it. And it's, again, I think it's something that you don't find on many uh, programs. Um, yet my experience is that it's really something enjoyable and, and, and people find amazing. So after three nights in the garden, we're gonna continue our drive further east. Um, so again, this is a really nice feature as well of this tour is that we can um, cross off a lot of boxes um, and, and do it overland, enjoying um, the South African countryside, which you find. I love John I think it's amazing. And we're going to make our way for um, what I think for most people will perhaps be, you know, really the highlight of visiting South Africa, which is um, heading to a private game reserve, um, uh, one called Kwandwe. I worked with Jackie to 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 pick this one out. Um, all of the big five are there. And so this is my question for our members. Um, and so you can answer the question by clicking on the chat button. Um, and I'll admit it's a bit of a trick question, but um, the animal that you see in the photograph um, is, um, I, I want you to tell me, who, see who, who knows, um, um, which animal of the big five is the one in the picture. Um, so if you um, have an idea, um, please uh, type it into your, onto your screen. I'm curious to see um, who gets the answer right. Um, and so I see somebody mentioned uh, cheetah. Uh, anybody else answering? Uh, okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. Well, um, the correct answer is, in fact, cheetah. Um, but the trick of the thing is, is that actually the cheetah is not part of the big five. <laughs> so... Uh, so that was what, what the trick question was. So it is in fact a cheetah and we will hopefully see cheetahs because they are amazing, amazing creatures, but they are not part of the big five. Um, and uh, so for those of you who don't know the big five, um, um, Jackie, tell us what the big five are. Mm. I know what they are, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, so first of all, the reason that they're called the big five is that they, those were the five most dangerous animals to hunt ah. and therefore the most prized animals to hunt. And they would be, the elephant, the rhinoceros, the lion, the leopard, and the buffalo. There you go. So that's what the big five is. Uh, and uh, at Kwanwe, which will be our home for the next uh, nights, uh, this is a beautiful reserve. So I want to um, explain a little bit. A lot of people um, have uh, Kruger National Park as being synonymous with, with South Africa. And it is um, up in the northeast part of the country and it, you know is quite an icon in and of itself but my own personal experience uh from having been on numerous safaris uh in south africa and east africa and in, in various places around the continent um is is that the private reserves of south africa are some of the best experiences to see wildlife when you go to the big national parks don't get me wrong it's also a great experience but you are chasing after the wildlife so to speak with um, safari jeeps from multiple other lodges. When you visit a place like Kwandwe, Jackie will elaborate for us. First of all, you have this spectacular lodge, um, which um, the Fish River Lodge actually only has nine guest rooms in it. So um, we will likely have at all of um, is if you're one of the first um, um, 18 to sign up for our program because that's all uh, we can take so uh, which is that which is a nice feature and you get a sense of the luxury um, that you experience here um, at the Great Fish Great Fish River Lodge at uh, in the Quandre Reserve um, and so the luxury and so on all aside it's, it's it's you will absolutely love this place it is spectacular but Jackie it's really about the game drives and so I, I want you to give us um, for our members a bit of an insight into what that experience is why it is particularly special at a place like Quandre. Um, Gordon it's, it's more than the game drives it's the game drives absolutely um, so it's the 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 game activities, the game interactions. Mm. Um, in a lot of these private reserves, these, uh, the, these reserves have been stocked over time. So, and particularly in the, in the, in the Eastern Cape, um, most of this was farmland way back. 
uh, and they, it was mostly sheep farms. Um, and so uh, when, they, when the farmers turned to, um, to game viewing and to safari, and, and there's a, a large area that has, has been converted to game viewing, um, the animals were brought in and, and the area was stocked. And now Kondwe, I think, has been a game reserve for 25 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, but in that time, they are constantly changing the animals and restocking and in reintroducing animals. And the benefit to us as the safari goers is that those animals are still finding their, their place and, find, and, and the interactions that you see between the animals are some of the best and some of the most exciting interactions that you just won't see in a national park where they have, you know, two million acres to roam. Um, and so some of, the, some of the best game interactions and some of the best game viewing that we've had ever has been uh, So that one thing is um, in many of the private reserves around Kruger, you want, if you want to go out for a walk in the bush, you'll just, you'll just go out for a, a short walk around the lodge and you'll be concentrating on the plants and the insects and the poop and the, and the spur and the trails and things. And that's it. At Kondwe though, you'll be tracking big game. So you'll be going on a real walking safari. You'll be, you saw that photograph with the elephant in front of the walkers. Um, that's the sort of walking safari that you'll be doing. Your, your, your ranger will be carrying a rifle and, um, and you'll be tracking big game. So um, that, that just elevates the, the experience, just a whole new level. That sounds so exciting. And again, this <laughs> area lies the difference and this is why um, you know, this is, this is a bit different than you'll find on a lot of safaris and, and why I, I was really thrilled that we were able to get some space at Kwandwe. As I mentioned, it's, it's not a big place. Uh, and, you know, you, the sensor from the picture, this is where they have their, um, you know, outdoor dining. Is this, is this out in the bush or is this part of the lodge, the, the picture that we see here? Well, it's out in the bush, but they, you can see there's a, there's a wall around it. So yeah. it's an extension of the lodge, um, but it is outdoors. But that's just that's just one of the dining experiences. Yeah. There there are many others that that you you'll have to be there to see them. You'll have to be there to see them. We're not going to show any more pictures because it's. Uh, <laughs> but I can assure you again that uh, this is going to be a really really a highlight of the trip. A phenomenal phenomenal experience. Um, and the the three days that we'll spend there, um, uh, just take us briefly through Jackie. What 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 does a typical day look like? I know it starts early in the morning with a game drive, um, but but what you know specifically to Kwandwe, What what can we sort of expect uh, to do during an average day there? Well, um, normally you would be woken up in the morning early. Uh, we would we you're normally woken before sunrise, um, and in in. November, that would probably be around 5, 5.30. Um, you'll, you'll have, you'll have a, a cup of your choice, tea, coffee, hot chocolate, um, and maybe a couple of biscuits, and then you'll be heading out on safari. You'll be out on safari for probably two and a half to three hours, um, depending on what you see. Uh, you'll, have some, you'll have a coffee stop along the way, and then you'll come back to the lodge for breakfast. Uh, you'll have a big slap-up breakfast. Um, and then if you wanted to go out for a walk, um, a bushwalk in the morning, you can do that. Otherwise, there's, there's a spa, you can have some spa treatments, lie by the pool, um, there's a gym, um, or if you just want to, there's a wonderful library as well. Um, and again, because we would more than likely have a full lodge, we'll have the attention of all the rangers. So um, there'll be a number of, of, of activities that we can, we can set up for ourselves. Um, and then you'll have lunch, uh, some siesta time, uh, then afternoon tea, just before you go out your afternoon safari. Um, and that might be, because we have three nights there, um, your afternoon safari could be a boat safari. There's a beautiful river, so you might, uh, we might go down and, and, uh, and they have a pontoon boat, so we'll, we'll spend some time floating up and down the river on the pontoon boat, maybe see some hippos, definitely do some birding, um, and... Uh, come back for dinner, and then after dinner, we might go out for an, an evening game, a night game drive, where we go and look for the night animals. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing um, that differentiates one of these private reserves from the Kruger Park. Obviously, in a national park, you can't go out after dark. Um, so that would be a typical day, and, and um, every day would be a variation on that theme.
Yeah, exactly. And so it's, they're full days. I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, but there is lots of time to relax and enjoy the beautiful luxuries of the lodge. Uh, and yet, um, we'll keep, keep you busy, um, you know, keeping an eye out, tracking um, that wildlife. So uh, that the overall experience there is going to be truly, truly amazing. As I say, we'll have three nights there, all the meals are included, uh, and the beverages as well. Um, and of course, all the details will be in the brochure that we're going to send to you shortly. After we leave, um, we then the South Africa portion of our trip will come to a close. We'll drive from uh, Quandwe um, back to a, a little city called Port Elizabeth. Um, we'll probably stop in for lunch um, before um, flying up to Johannesburg. Uh, and then those of you that um, are um, uh, wish to fly home, then the main part of our program, South African Secrets, um, will end in Johannesburg uh, and uh, you'll take a, an evening flight um, back to Europe uh, or uh, if you choose to go on the other route via the US to get back home. And for those of you who would like to uh, continue on on our extension program, we put quite an exciting program together and we're going to begin by flying out of Johannesburg up to Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe and Victoria Falls is truly one of those um, amazing sites of those amazing waterfalls that you'll see. I've managed to see several different waterfalls myself um, over the years and uh, Victoria Falls is truly one of the most spectacular ones. So we'll fly up in the morning. We're going to overnight at or near Johannesburg Airport. That'll enable us to catch one of the morning flights up to Victoria Falls. We'll then head off to our lodge which is going to be the Victoria Falls Safari Lodge located right in the town uh, which is on the Zimbabwean side uh, of the border. So uh, Victoria Falls, as you know, is part of the Zambezi River system, which divides Zambia and Zimbabwe. And so the best views of the falls, are, of course, from the Zimbabwean side, particularly at this time of the year when we're on the cusp between the dry and the wet season. So that afternoon, you'll have a chance to grab a drop on the shuttle bus and head down to the, the national park itself, where you can get various great um, vistas of, of the falls um, from different angles. And we'll have a, a lovely dinner in uh, at Victoria Falls that evening. And then the next day, um, we've got a, a nice program for you in the morning. Uh, we'll take a, a ride on the Zambezi River itself, um, give you a little bit of a perspective and um, insight into the importance of this very, of this very significant, um, <clears throat> this very significant, uh, you know, waterway that uh, comes all the way um, from the, the northern parts of, uh, of uh, Zimbabwe and, and, and Botswana and, and, and flows down and ultimately comes out into um, the Indian Ocean. Uh, so we'll take a bit of a cruise on the river, perhaps spot some wildlife. Um, and then in the afternoon, there'll be a time to explore a myriad of other activities uh, on your own. Uh, so we can recommend, I've done several different things while I've been in, in Victoria Falls. Um, for the really adventurous, you can go do river rafting um, beneath the falls as the Zambezi River then continues out through this awesome gorge. Um, there's a helicopter ride you can do uh, as well uh, as a number of other. There's also a, um, a very famous railway bridge uh, that forms part of the, of the railway that joins the northern parts of the African continent with the south. Um, and they pass through here, through Victoria Falls, and you can take a, a ride halfway across that railway bridge, which of course is poised above the falls and offers you some really tremendous vistas. So um, no matter how you shake it, it's gonna be a, a full day, an exciting day of, of seeing these, these wonderful falls. Uh, and we'll uh, have a barbecue boma show in the evening. Uh, that's a typical African barbecue where we'll go out uh, and uh, enjoy sample some of the the local fare um, that you have available that that you have available and get to taste some perhaps some animals you've never tried before so it's I find it always quite an amusing experience and the food really is very good so the following day um, we'll head out of Victoria Falls and make our way um, from uh, from the town itself to the southwest of Zimbabwe and our destination is Wange National Park um, and Huangay is actually the largest natural reserve in the whole country of uh, Zimbabwe, which makes it quite an interesting place. It was originally uh, a game reserve um, since back in the uh, 1920s is when it was originally designated a game reserve uh, and subsequently a national park. Uh, and as a result, 
Uh, it is a congregation of animals that is hardly rivaled by anywhere in the southern part of Africa. And we've um, selected to go here partly because of the, the wide variety of animals that we're likely to see. It's known as one of the greatest elephant preserves uh, in, in the whole world. Um, so we'll, we'll be sure, and you can never see enough elephants is, is my opinion. But we also have a good chance to see the rest of the big five to the extent that we weren't able to see them down in, um, in Kwanwe in, in, uh, in South Africa. We will be able to, uh, or we'll have a good chance to see them here. You never really know. Um, we're gonna be staying at a, wonderful uh, uh, accommodation here called uh, The Hyde. It's a family owned lodge uh, with only 10 um, tent uh, rooms. Um, and this is a true tented lodge. And part of the reason why I wanted to stay here um, at The Hyde is because you get a, an authentic safari experience. And you know, you, you've all seen you know, the films about people on safari that go back to the 50s and 60s. And in many cases, those safaris were undertaken in these, in, in these uh, luxury safari tents. And that's exactly what we have here, um, is, uh, is, is a true uh, tented safari experience. Um, they of course have all the amenities. As you can see here, there's a, a swimming pool on the site. Uh, the, the rooms are very, very comfortable, um, all with private facilities, a lovely bathtub. But just that feeling of being in a tent brings you that much closer to nature and the fact that it's family owned as well and it's a small little resort means that you you know you you really get that personal service you get some excellent food and but again most importantly it's about this uh and um i'll speak about this in a moment but this is a a little place that they have on the premises called uh dove's nest uh, and I'll, and I'll, I'll mention this as I go through sort of the daily program, what we're going to do while we're at the hide. So while we're there, a similar to Kwan Wei, but, but different, and as with most safari lodges, we're going to have all of our meals um, at the lodge because there's no other place to eat out in the middle of the bush. Uh, and uh, we'll get up each morning uh, bright and early because the best time to see animals is either uh, early in the morning or in the evening going into nighttime because that's when they're all out hunting, uh, meandering about in the heat of the day. Typically the animals are just uh, lying around somewhere. So you will still spot the grazers, for example, but the big cats uh, and so on, you're more likely to see uh, in, the, in the early morning. So we'll get up bright and early each morning, five o'clock in the morning uh, for sunrise. We'll head out uh, and on our, on our first game drives, we'll come back then after a couple of hours um, having seen some amazing, uh, amazing things in the park. Um, we'll have a sumptuous breakfast. Um, then we'll have time in the late morning to relax, enjoy the property. So typically you don't spend a, you don't do much safari sort of in the late morning to early afternoon. Uh, we might get, go on a, a, an early afternoon safari. We have up to four different programs per day that you can do. There's also a uh, maybe a chance to do a walking safari, uh, which is always fun because then you're really out there. You feel exposed to the elements and to all the, the creatures that are wandering around. Of course, the, um, the guides that take us out are always very uh, well armed and they're very accustomed to this. So, so nothing, um, nothing can happen. Um, but a walking safari is, is a great way to, to enjoy um, and, and just really get a feel for the, for the African savannah. In the uh, afternoon, then we'll have a, a, a wonderful afternoon tea. So uh, very much the British influence is sort of noticed here. So we'll have a, a delicious afternoon tea. And then at some point uh, in the evening, then we'll head out for our evening game drives. We'll have another opportunity to see the animals. And I tell you, these trackers are amazing at picking out animals, even at dusk. You know, you'll be looking around from your vehicle thinking, well, I don't see a thing. And next thing you know, boom, he'll pull up and he'll flash his flashlight. Um, if it is dark, or he'll point out to something in the trees that you could hardly see and you'll pull out your binoculars and, and there it'll be, it'll be a leopard up in the tree or it'll be, um, you know, one of the other species of hundreds of species of animals that, that live in this area. Um, so that'll be the experience then. And of course, dinner time, we'll have a wonderful uh, dinner served by the, the staff there. Um, and again, it's a very familial sort of atmosphere uh, that you have. So that's the daily program that we have at, at Huangay. One of the other things that you can do while you're 
Kawange, and that was the, the picture I showed you a little bit earlier. But uh, you have a, an opportunity, or a couple of guests will have the opportunity, those that, those that wish and those that are brave enough. Um, they have a spot called the Dove's Nest, which is a, another uh, tented um, spot uh, that is um, off from the main lodge. So it's out, um, not far, but you know, 15 minutes away from camp and you're off on your own. So some people might consider it romantic, some people might consider it adventurous, some people might think you're out of your mind to be out in the bush on your own. It's up um, on a pedestal, it's kind of almost like a tree house, um, and there you can spend the night uh, and enjoy being all on your own in the African wilderness. A very, very special experience. Uh, and so um, for those that are interested, we'll have a draw because it's, uh, you know, we're only there for a few nights, so only uh, two people at a time can, can share that experience. Um, but it is a, a wonderful way to, to spend your time at Wange. So that will round out our, our trip there. Um, after three wonderful nights, we will make the drive back to Victoria Falls Airport uh, from where we will fly to uh, Johannesburg and then make our way uh, back home or perhaps somewhere else. If we're, you, know, you want to continue somewhere else in South Africa, obviously that can be can be enabled as well. So that rounds out our South African Secrets program and specifically the extension program to uh, Victoria Falls and Huangay. Let me go through the program details for you now. Um, this program is available, the South African portion, uh, at 89.80 per person based on double occupancy and I think a pretty reasonable single supplement actually here at 10.630. For those wanting to continue on to Victoria Falls and Huangay, uh, the additional uh, cost there is 4680 uh, double and uh, 5280 single. Of course, everything in Canadian dollars. What does that all include? Well, it, uh, it's our typical list of inclusions in the sense that all of our accommodation, 13 nights uh, in hand, our hand-picked hotels and lodges all along the way, all of the transfers uh, on a private basis uh, and uh, in, in private vehicles, depending on uh, how many people we have in this group. Um, we, are, of course, have the domestic flights um, Port Elizabeth, Johannesburg, um, and all of your game drives. So uh, pretty much everything is included. Um, what? Um, oh, let me talk about the inclusions on the extension program next. Uh, of course, uh, while we're up in Huangue, we'll have a night in uh, Johannesburg and five nights in both Victoria Falls and uh, Huangue National Park. It also takes in your economy class return flights. They're, they're not that inexpensive, and that's you know, partly why the cost is what it is between Johannesburg and Victoria Falls. Uh, and again, all of our ground transportation, everything on a private basis. And uh, you'll have in Victoria Falls, I, again, either breakfast or dinner. Uh, and uh, while at the game lodge, you'll have all of your meals included. That's uh, typically what happens at game lodges. So the only exclusions that you're looking at, of course, as always, your travel medical insurance and cancellation insurance is, is extra and we can happily quote you on that. Again, highly recommended. I wouldn't leave home without it, frankly, as the old, um, as the old American Express saying went. Uh, and uh, of course your beverages during your meals, um, except at Kwanwe, the beverages actually are included. So that's a, a nice little, little bonus. And then the international airfare from Canada to South Africa. So let me speak about airfare for a moment. Uh, I was looking, uh, we were looking into what the airfares look like and we, we have, Separated airfares, as many of you will know, partly because our members come from coast to coast and people who are anywhere outside of the Toronto area don't want to come to Toronto, and nor do you have to come to Toronto to, to get to your uh, destination, in this case, South Africa. So looking at the price points um, between Toronto and Cape Town coming back from Johannesburg, so that applies if you're doing just the South African Secrets program or with the extension program, either way you're coming back from Johannesburg. Um, when we were looking at it, um, it ranges from about nine to twelve hundred dollars, and if you're coming from the West Coast, not a lot more actually. And that's again assuming that you are traveling from Canada via Europe, which is the rec the routing that I recommend is to make a stop over in Europe. And you might even want to consider staying in Europe for a couple of days, um, because of course when you travel to Europe, you have the jet lag. But when you go from Europe down to South Africa, you're in the same time zone, so there's no jet lag. So that's what that's, uh, that pretty much rounds out the program. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can absolutely contact us. Um, but of course, we have a number of member questions uh, that have come in. And so I'm going to uh, look to Joel to provide me those questions and we're going to address those now. And uh, yeah, if you, if you do have any questions about anything you've heard, questions of me or for Jackie, um, then please do let us know. Uh, and yeah, 
Let me just uh, pull up the question box here. Um, of course, uh, <laughs> the question we always get um, from Teresa in Windsor is, um, so whether like, Jackie, what are they like at this time of the year? You mentioned briefly that is it is the um, it's the low season, um, but I think it's a good time of the year to go. Tell us. Well, um, it's it's coming out of winter. It's it's, it's early summer. Um, of course, we have different weather in the, in the Cape versus um, further north in in Zimbabwe and Botswana. So, what it means is that we're going into the dry season in the Cape. Um, it could be windy, um, but often November is not windy. Um, it'll be warm, so we're looking at, what, about probably 28 Celsius um, and uh, during the day. <clears throat> and then when we go, when we go further north, uh, November is normally the month where the rain, where, where it starts to rain. So it's not in the middle of the, of the, the wet, rainy season. Um, but there, there is a chance of, of afternoon thunder showers in Victoria Falls and Chobe. Um, mm -hmm. But warm again, so uh, you might be might be looking at 30 degrees during the day, um, and comfortable at night. So, um, so it's a nice time. It's it's sort of a shoulder season, which means that the weather could be a little unpredictable. Um, so what we would probably recommend is that you, you prepare for all occasions. You prepare for hot weather, you prepare for wet weather. Um, but we can pretty much uh, yeah. safely say it won't be cold. <laughs> It'll be a lot nicer than it, it, it is in Canada yes. at the end of November. Let's put it that way. That is the truth. That's, that's, <laughs> that's probably the one thing you can be sure of. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, great. Um, so one more question here was uh, John asked, uh, if, do I need any vaccinations? Um, so, so I've got a couple of answers for that. I'm sure Jackie has a perspective on it as well. First of all, um, don't we, uh, you know, uh, advice on, on vaccinations. You do need to consult with your personal physician or a travel medical clinic. Um, and, uh, my personally, I would say you should make sure that all of your regular vaccinations are up to date beyond that. I think the big question people have is about malaria. Um, and so, uh, I think most doctors will tell you if you're going to South Africa, regardless is that you need to have, uh, you need to take malaria prophylaxis. Um, uh, what, what is your, do you have any thoughts on that, uh, Jackie? Um, so if you're only doing the South Africa program, mm. uh, you do not, you do not need malaria, uh, okay. prophylactics. There, there is no malaria at all in the Cape and there's no malaria at all in the Eastern Cape in Kwandwe. So if you're only doing the South Africa portion, no need for malaria prophylactics. If you're going up to Victoria Falls and Chobe, then it would be a good idea to, to put yourself on to, or have your travel clinic put you on to um, a prophylactic. Um, if you don't like the malaria drugs, um, then you need to be very sure that you wear long pants in the evenings, socks, and, um, and have some good uh, insecticide, insect, no, no, no insecticide, uh, insect repellent. Exactly. <laughs> Please no insects. Um, so yeah, so uh, definitely, if you're doing if you're doing the uh, post trip, then um, consider malaria. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, and as I say, all other advice officially you should get from your physician or your um, travel medical clinic. Uh, I got another question here from Mary. Um, how likely is it that we'll see all of the big five? <laughs> That is, oh. Yeah, that is a good question. You know, it is, I always say, it is wildlife. You never know. They're wild. Uh, and so I would say, I mean, my experience, Jackie, you'll tell us yours from Kwanwe. My experience is that you're, you're, you're guaranteed to see elephants. Um, you're highly likely to see buffalo and lot at some point. Um, but the tricky ones are the, the leopard is the, that's the guy that, uh, yeah. uh, and the, the, the leopard and the rhinoceros are the elusive ones. Yes. That is correct. Uh, fortunately, at, at Kondwe, we have a pretty good chance of seeing rhinoceros. Wow. Um, and, you know, leopard, that's the one, that's the one that, that I, I will, I'll, I will never, I'm, I'm never going to stick my neck out. Um, there are leopards in, um, in Chobe, and in fact, there are some resident leopards around Chobe Game Lodge. Um, so there is a, there's a chance of seeing them there, but, but that's the one that I would say 
don't expect to see it. Yeah, no, exactly. I always say it is as well, leopards. You, you really, the best time is to go out at night, even though, you know, after a couple of glasses of wine, you know, people are sometimes not always wanting to go out. But I found that the best luck is with a good game tracker, a good guide at nighttime. Build flashlight and then boom, they're all leopards. Um, we'll cross our fingers for everyone. Um, I think that is it for the questions. Um, but of course, if you do have any other questions, um, we are available at any time. Please just drop us an email, give us a call, uh, and we're happy to answer your questions. Um, and if there's a question we can't answer, we just call Jackie and she'll give the answer to the question. So um, I want to thank Jackie very, very much for your time today uh, and giving us a little bit of an insight in what we can expect in South Africa. It's been brilliant. Um, as I say, this, is, uh, this webinar has been recorded, so we will send a copy to everyone who registered today uh, and even all of those who couldn't um, make it out for the webinar this morning. Jackie, thank you again. Um, all the best to you in South Africa. <laughs> and we'll chat thank soon. You. Chat soon. Thanks, else. Gordon. Thank you, Jackie. Have yourselves a wonderful day and thanks for joining our South African Secrets um, Wheel and Anchor webinar.